In this week's edition of Made in Kent, it might look like we're in the Champagne or Bordeaux region, but we're actually overlooking the Simpsons Wine Estate in Barham, Canterbury, where in the last few days they finished harvesting their grapes, which will go towards making 300,000 bottles of wine. The weather is certainly very different to the famous wine regions across the channel, but that hasn't stopped the estate's owners from producing a tasty tipple. We sell wine all around the world for our French estate and 14 different countries around the world. And, you know, we've been talking about uh, every time we, we go abroad, we always say, oh, by the way, there's one more thing. We have this uh, English estate uh, as well. And, and obviously in the UK, we are sympathetic to English wine. Uh, but for example, in the US, you know, a lot of people would, be, would, would chuckle at you. But we are now, you know, we've had this land for, for coming up to six years and we've been talking about our project for six years. So people are now willing to give it a go. And when they taste it, it stands up for, to, for it sort of speaks for itself. The quality is superb. Indoors, in the powerhouse of Simpsons is the winery, where the grapes will be fermented and processed into their bottles of bubbly. Part of a growing industry in Kent and across the UK, Charles's wife Ruth believes they can go toe to toe with the vino heavyweights. English wine now really is a competitor to be, to be reckoned with, and certainly England is, is seen now as the most um, one of the most dynamic wine growing areas in the world. As far as English wines are concerned, certainly the the, uh, the real highlight for for England is their method traditional sparklings at this stage, and they really are competing on an international stage now. And in blind tastings, which are run by you know by, by, by international sommeliers and masters of wine, they are actually coming out on top. They're coming out over and above champagne. So very much the English wines. Are, the sparkling wines are, are, are a force to be reckoned with in the wine world. And I'm delighted to say that Charles and Ruth join me now. Thanks ever so much for joining us. Uh, tell us a little bit about the two wines that you've brought in for me today. So the two wines we've brought in, uh, one is from our French property, which is in the Languedoc, so right down in the south of France, about 20 minutes from the Mediterranean. And the second uh, wine is from our Kentish Estate, which is in Barham, just south of Canterbury. Um, the two wines are both sparkling rosés, mm -hmm. uh, both made in the method traditional, um, but they've been grown uh, a thousand kilometres apart. So we just thought it was an interesting yeah. comparison for you to make. <laughs> I'm going to taste the, both of them and um, have a quick see if I can taste the difference. Um, tell us a little bit about, because obviously the interesting thing is the, um, the chalk that reappears in Kent and in That's right. France. So, so we enjoy the same, uh, it's, it's identical geology to uh, Champagne and parts of Burgundy. So the uh, chalk leaves the Parisian basin, goes onto the English Channel and gets forced to the surfaces in the Downs, in the North and the South Downs. And chalk is seen as the Holy Grail, hence why we ended up investing in Kent. By contrast, the, the French wine that you were trying, it was grown on, on clay. So you, get, you don't get the same sort of mineral character mm. uh, from the French as you would do the, the English. You can taste the difference. It's subtle, but it's quite interesting to see the difference. I'm, I'm not a huge wine connoisseur myself, so um, I wouldn't be able to tell the exact difference. So both delicious. And tell us a little bit about um, the weather. We've heard a lot about how it's been fantastic for uh, wine producers. It has. So a so, um, couple of things that um, really was advantageous this year. Firstly was the beast from the east. So even though it was annoying for mm. commuters, uh, it was certainly helpful in terms of keeping the vines dormant uh, because last year, by contrast, uh, we were hit heavily by frost and that's because the, the vines prematurely budded. Um, so the beast from the east kept the, 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 the vines asleep and so the budding became later. And then we had this very stable and warm period uh, during the flowering, which is the vine sort of productivity, a reproductive um, uh, moment. And so those th two things in combination just gave us really a textbook harvest. Absolutely. And what are the challenges and obviously some of the benefits of having something in France and also in Kent? Well, it gives us um, a lot of background, I suppose. We've been, we've been making wine in France for 17 years now. So we've, we've sort of learned our trade in France and then brought it back home to the UK. We're both from the UK originally. Um, so that has helped. It's given us a real background in the industry, lots of contacts. Um, but the, the UK really now is, is actually the, one of the most dynamic wine growing areas in the world and so it's very exciting just to start a new project and uh, uh, and be part of, of, a, of an exciting new industry. Fantastic and just quickly any projects for the future? 
Uh, yes, well, one of something really exciting that's happening this weekend is the Rochester uh, Festival for the Wine Garden of England. So what's really exciting now is that there's a real critical mass in Kent, and the Kent producers are beginning to talk to one another and begin to share best practice. Uh, and that's really exciting, and we're going to really try and promote tourism into Kent, Fantastic. which is great for the Unfortunately, area. 